Welcome back. Here we are, my basement uh, shooting range, and uh, this is this is just a uh, nicely ventilated area that I have where I can uh, shoot into a uh, solid trap with 22s, standard velocity 22s without any uh, hazard. And right now I'm just uh, test firing this new Remington Model 572 Fieldmaster 22 pump. What a fabulous gun. This takes me back and I'll tell you all about it. We're going to break it down and show you how to clean it. Stay tuned. I was about nine years old or so, I think it was, when uh, my buddy and I were in the basement of my old house. And uh, we were shooting a old Model 500 Daisy BB gun. Very similar to uh, the typical Red Rider, except it had a plastic stock <clears throat> instead of the wooden stock. But we were shooting at uh, swinging yo-yos and putting up little targets on the uh, <laughs> at the end of the basement and knocking them over, or trying to. And then we heard the stairs creaking, and my dad came downstairs with uh, one of these, an early vintage Model 572 uh, Fieldmaster. Now, it wasn't the BDL configuration. They didn't have such things in those days. It was a simpler, the standard ramp front sight, uh, rear sight and uh, the uh, standard bead front sight. But um, other than that, it was pretty much the same gun, and it also had in the back here, rather than having this impressed checkering, it had uh, grooved, uh, it had grooved uh, forend. It was a simpler gun, but boy, do we have fun with it. That was my first introduction to the uh, smell and sound of a 22, and uh, I fell in love with 22s that day. The, um, I mean, my my dad was. Uh, uh, very fond of the Model 760 Remington pump uh, in his 300 Savage in those days, and if you can see, this is this is along those same lines and the same same lines as also his favorite um, 870 pump shotgun. So it was it was the sort of gun that he always liked. He was a southpaw for one thing, so he didn't like to have problems with uh, feeding bolts and things like that. Because in those days, you know, uh, they didn't cater so much to lefties. But um, this is a fantastic rifle. Uh, it's it's pretty. I think it's very pretty. It's, it's probably one of the most uh, classic 22s that are out there. It's been around a very long time, uh, since I think about 1956 or so, and that would have been about the era that uh, my dad purchased his. But um, and of course we were shooting with open sights. You know, the I, it was many years later that I added a, a Weaver uh, B6 six power scope on it, which was a, a lot thinner than this one inch tube here. And this this scope, by the way, is just a, um, it's a black powder scope that I had on my old Thompson Center uh, black powder, inline black powder gun. And uh, because the parallax, internal parallax settings are the same, works very nicely. Uh, it's a, it's about a, a 50 yard in a parallax setting. And the, um, it's a one to five, one to five zoom. Makes it a very nice, handy uh, 22 zoom ratio. It's been a, a very popular gun for many years. It's been in, it's been made in different forms, uh, different configurations. Uh, this may possibly be one of the more uh, popular ones right now. It's a little bit more difficult to find. Uh, this one here has got the standard uh, straight comb. Uh, the typical, the typical modern uh, 572 is. Uh, only available as far as I know now if you buy one new with a Monte Carlo stock which I think is a little bit much for a 22 it's not necessary as far as I'm concerned but they look pretty uh, and this one has got this one's got a 20 I think it's a 21 inch barrel if I even actually measured it but I believe that's what the uh, barrel length is on it it's a um, it's a very accurate rifle and it's a it's a rifle with good heft I mean, this feels just like a, uh, especially when you put the weight of a scope on it, it, it feels very much like a, a centerfire uh, rifle, and it handles like one. Um, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a nice gun for anybody who likes the feel of a uh, larger gun. It's a very efficient gun. It holds about 14 to 15 rounds of 22 long rifle, um, depending on the bullet configuration. And it also, because it's a tubular feed gun, it will handle handle any kind of ammo that you put in it. So if you want to shoot uh, subsonic ammunition, or if you want to shoot uh, CB caps, or uh, anything like that that uh, generates very, very low report, or uh, whatever you want to do, uh, handles it just as nicely. 
So what I'd like to do is uh, take you on a tour of how this gun breaks down. You know, I've had uh, I've had comical experiences where uh, people have passed me a, a, a barrel and a receiver and and a, a box of uh, parts uh, and asked me to put it back together because they've they've gone a little bit farther than they should have and um, as a result they ended up with a, a gun broken down way beyond uh, necessary. So uh, this is a very very easy gun to break down and I'll show you what entails uh, and how to uh, get it back together again. Okay breakdown is very simple. First of all you need to have a very good quality uh, hardened hollow ground screwdriver blade that will fit into this barrel dowel screw. This is a standard slotted uh, screw but be very careful because this anodized aluminum scratches very easily and uh, the, the black will come off and forever show. Uh, you don't want to do that. You need to have a uh, number two Phillips screwdriver. Number two is the standard Phillips screwdriver size. A good quality number two Phillips screwdriver bit to remove this and I have cleared this uh, gun completely and made sure that it's empty. Uh, you want to remove the magazine tube. Remove the magazine tube from the outer tube assembly. And now, with the action cocked and the safety in the on position, in other words, with the red buried, uh, then you want to proceed to uh, tapping out those two uh, cross bolts. Now the cross bolts, I like to uh, I like to pad my gun up whenever I'm working on it, just to be sure that I don't scuff up the stock wood. Just simply knock out these knock out these pins. Uh, I may have to do this off camera because once they get to this point here, they're hitting the bench. Uh, but I'll be right back. Okay, we've removed the two cross pins uh, from the uh, trigger guard. Now just simply remove the trigger guard straight down and out. And as you can see, the uh, trigger guard now can be very, very, the trigger assembly can be very easily uh, cleaned out, swept out. And what I like to do sometimes if it's uh, really dirty is I just take a, a simple small container like this and put it in and swish it around a little bit and it will get out the uh, crud without having to dig in with too much of uh, too much brushing what in whatever fashion uh, get the get the mechanism uh, completely cleaned up and and dry it off uh, do not oil this excessively now there's there's a little bit of there's a little bit of oil remaining uh, which uh, if if I were if I were hunting hunting in cold climates I wouldn't use any oil whatsoever it's absolutely not necessary you know you don't you don't shoot that many rounds when you're hunting anyway but if you're going out just having a you know having a fun time you can put a drop of oil on a couple of the friction spots to uh, make things a little bit smoother but this uh, this trigger mechanism is not a target trigger um, they typically run about four to five pounds of uh, trigger uh, pressure um, whatever you do if you if you desire to drop that hammer be very very certain that you have uh, held on to that uh, held on to the hammer with your thumb uh, because you don't want that you don't want that trigger fl the hammer flying forward on you okay you can clean out the uh, underside of that hammer and uh, make sure that the se the uh, sear is clean make sure your uh, all the surfaces are clean and then restore the safety to the on position to protect it from being fired that's it. Once you've removed that, the next step is to uh, simply, and again, this is also an anodized, uh, anodized aluminum part, so be careful that you don't place that where it will get scuffed. I see a lot of, a lot of uh, 572 uh, Remingtons that uh, get very badly beat up after a while from uh, mishandling. This, this gun here, by the way, was made in 1976. Um, I just got the paperwork from uh, Remington on it that says uh, when it was when there when the serial number was uh, affixed and um, It's in pretty good shape for a gun that old uh, This this gun here. I, I found it recently uh, I just desired to get one of these old guns back after so many years. I had I had traded mine years ago for a um, Seiko 222 Probably got next to nothing for it um, but in those days, it was something that I wanted to do was to get to get a uh, 
center fire gun and I, and I figured I didn't need a 22 anymore, but one can always use a 22. So the first thing we want to do is take off the uh, barrel dowel screw. Now this is a, this is a very, very uh, important procedure. This, is, this screw here uh, must be removed without uh, any, without any uh, tilting of the screwdriver bit or anything that would bugger up that uh, slot. So very, very carefully and using good downward pressure uh, without and making sure that your screwdriver is not contacting the sides of the receiver uh, simply back it out and that's it now this is not a large screw this also has a uh, washer uh, under under the head so don't lose that don't lose that washer uh, set that aside in a safe place now taking your Phillips screwdriver Simply back out the, the screw here. Whatever you do, don't go further than this. This is, this is all that's necessary. There we go. Once you've got it to this point, all you do is make sure that you have nothing in the way because things might come apart unexpectedly uh, swift. And just simply hold on to the, hold on to the entire uh, front assembly and pull it straight out without twisting and that removes the that removes the barrel and magazine assembly uh, with the bolt attached uh, directly from the receiver now you're going to see all kinds of you're going to see all kinds of dirt here uh, go right ahead and remove it slide the bolt straight out now notice that the notice that the bolt goes in with this particular with this particular cutaway uh, on this side here with your action rail this this action bar must contact uh, must seat in that in that cutaway so make sure that you remove the bolt clean everything up if you've watched my other cleaning videos you know the uh, things that you need you need to have you should have some high grade uh, paper shop towels uh, such as these these are these are lint free they don't uh, they don't leave uh, paper residue all over the place and your gun parts that could possibly stop up your action. Uh, these are Scott's uh, rags in a box type of thing. Uh, you should have uh, some good quality flannel uh, cleaning patches. These are these are specifically 22 patches or you can use the square ones. Uh, an M16 brush for cleaning things up and you want to have a cotton bore swab and uh, a good uh, tight fitting uh, cleaning jag. Then, you know that you always should use a high-grade uh, cleaning rod. This is a, this is a spring steel uh, cleaning rod which is coated with plastic and it's got a high-grade uh, ferrule on the end that will, with an adapter that will accept any brand of, uh, any brand of uh, cleaning tips or brushes. So, this, as you can see, this has a male threaded end and um, it's got a very good it's got a very very high grade these are not cheap um, but you know your guns aren't either this has got a high grade ball bearing handle a little chip in it from moving years ago but uh, this this will ensure that your brush and your patches will follow the rifling rather than skitter across them what I use for cleaning um, I, I keep it very very simple uh, you can you can use simple uh, mineral spirits this is simply this stuff right here this is, this is just as simple as it gets it's uh, mineral spirits started solvent and uh, if, you've, if you've seen some of my videos um, it's, it's the basic component of most um, gun cleaning solvents so no matter how no matter how sexy uh, their product advertising is uh, this this product right here is primarily started solvent with some nice smelly stuff in it that I love. Um, it's like cologne, uh, but you can use you can use hoppies or anything that's non-oily. I don't recommend for cleaning purposes. I absolutely do not recommend CLP cleaning, lubricant, and protecting. You don't need the lubricating part when you come to uh, cleaning a gun up. Um, that's you know that's good for field expedience in the in the military. I used it myself, but. You don't want to get this gun oily. There's no reason whatsoever. It's simply going to gum up your action, and you're going to find yourself 
uh, shooting fewer shots before you have to clean it, before the action starts getting cruddy and sticky. So keep it simple, uh, just stick to solvent, either as I say, just a simple mineral spirits or something like hoppies, but non-oily. Um, and then you should have some, some, this is just basically, I use this bottle all the time, but the only thing that's in this bottle is mineral oil that you get in a uh, drugstore. And that's what I replenish the bottle with. And I, and I use it primarily to uh, just wipe the gun down and wipe the parts over very lightly. Okay, so let's get right at cleaning it. And again, if you've seen my other videos, uh, you know that I prefer above any kind of gun cradle whatsoever. I prefer a simple uh, machinist or mechanics vise uh, with simple jaws and make yourself uh, some pads from uh, 3 8 inch uh, plywood or some equivalent to that. And I like, I like 3 8 inch plywood because it doesn't squish down too much. And place your barrel perfectly uh, in the middle of the two jaws and make sure that your magazine tube is not uh, contacting the jaws in any way and then pull her home and reef it in tight and that will provide the absolute sturdiest way of holding on to your rifle uh, this is this is what's used in the factories uh, when this gun was when this gun was first made I'm sure that it saw a voice a vice very similar to this simply saturate the uh, swab. I'll do it from this side so you can see. And any overage you can let it just fall on that rag because we're going to be using that. Now, carefully insert it into the bore so you're not slapping into the end of that uh, chamber and feed it in carefully. Uh, you don't have to be uh, you don't have to be too particular with this process because all we're doing here is simply wiping uh, solvent through the bore to get things uh, to get things wet and I'm gonna put a little bit more on there because uh, this this gun fired probably uh, 300 rounds or so uh, since when I last had it out and um, so the inside is probably packed with uh, all kinds of uh, powder residue in the equipment lineup, I failed to mention that you need to have a good fitting uh, 22 brush. Make sure there's a 22 caliber brush. Don't try to use, some people try to use old uh, 30 caliber brushes or something like that, but you want to be sure that you use a 22 caliber brush. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to get the bore clean. You could very well damage your bore by getting things stuck. So uh, run that through. Uh, you should just simply run it through until. Uh, and holding on to the handle. Don't allow the don't allow the uh, brush to uh, skip across the rifling. You want that handle to spin under your hand. And that's off camera, but uh, what I'm doing is just simply pushing the rod back and forth inside. And after a couple of passes, you want to make sure that you've cleaned off that rod so that it doesn't pick up any stray particles. That should do it. I'll wet a few patches here at the same time, saturate those, and I'm going to push one at a time down through the bore. And make sure that you have a pointed uh, jag that will capture that patch and guide it in carefully and just push it all the way through. Okay, now. I've run two. I've run two patches through, and as you can see, they're pretty filthy. So we'll just keep on pushing patches through until it comes out clean, and I'll be back with you. Okay, my seventh patch came out sparkling clean. Uh, you can see the progression here. This was patch number one, and then it moves along. Uh, in the last patches right here, so it they came out uh, they came out very clean after seven patches. Now, one thing I want to caution you on this side on the uh, action bar side of the barrel, there is a uh, ejector. Now that ejector can be removed, but uh, it's you you don't want to you don't want to lose that in the process of cleaning. I'm pushing it from one side, and it simply tilts out and removes like this, and that's all there is to it. Now. This will collect a lot of uh, residue, and like I say, just be careful you don't lose that and, and uh, forget to put it in. 
that's that basically also is not only a rejector but it guides the it guides the bolt okay carefully now with a uh, with this wetted uh, rag I want to get a little bit of solvent on there perhaps and it's like I say it's not necessary to use anything fancy here you can just simply use uh, mineral spirits is going to clean it up just as good as anything else and you don't want to get oil in here and I'll show you there's another reason why um, if you get if you get oil on this barrel uh, this barrel dowel right here uh, it's going to prevent you to get that it's going to prevent getting the um, barrel dowel and the receiver uh, tightly fit and that bar barrel dowel screw is, is not going to tighten up uh, correctly uh, you want to have virtually dry surfaces it's all right what you should do is simply wipe the parts with a lightly oiled cloth virtually dry you don't want to have it glistening with oil or anything like that but we're going to go right ahead uh, off camera here and I'll clean these uh, I'll clean these parts up and I'll be back with you okay the replacement of this ejector is very very simple and straightforward but you want to get it right uh, first of all just simply take the the uh, there's an open end make sure you insert the open end with this folded end facing you simply insert it squeeze it together slightly if needed insert it into this opening and then with your finger on the back side I'll back it off a little bit so you can see better you see my finger is inserted in the back carefully because there's sharp edges here that can cut you uh, but just simply guide it with your finger on the other side and you want to move this forward it's got a little bit of a it's got a little bit of a notch right here and that wants to that wants to seat against this part of the barrel right here so make sure you hook that notch in press against it on the back side with your finger and with this finger just simply rotate it into place and that's all you need to do the um, next thing we need to do is make sure that bolt and the receiver are cleaned up uh, spick and span okay the bolt assembly is probably best cleaned up uh, just in a tub with uh, solvent okay I just simply drop it into the uh, solvent and swish it around use my M16 brush to clean things up this is just simple uh, mineral spirits that's all you need nothing fancy nothing expensive I uh, really I really have a hard time uh, letting go of money you know I, I don't like to go out and spend uh, money unnecessarily on uh, things I'd rather spend it on ammo and maybe a new gun someday down the road or you know give it to charity but uh, there's no need of, no need of buying expensive solvents and things that sound fancy uh, you don't need CLP you don't need anything like that this is you know clean metal when it's clean it's clean you don't have there's, there's nothing that you can do to further preserve metal um, other than a simple wipe down of of uh, light oil now the um, the pot is completely cleaned up and uh, make sure that make sure that you have uh, your your firing pin should be uh, sliding back and forth freely inside here and uh, inspect the bolt face carefully make sure that it's clean and if it's not then just give it a quick once over with your brush another another dose and that's it and we'll uh, clean it we'll dry it up uh, very good now pay very very close attention to how much oil I place on uh, parts this goes for the entire gun uh, no matter what it does no matter how much friction that is involved or anything this is all this this is all that's necessary I I placed some oil on a patch just like this light oil just a standard uh, bathroom grade mineral oil that's all there is to it I had about four or five drops on there uh, barely enough to make my hands just barely enough to make my hands uh, oily and simply wipe it on the parts and this is only for corrosion resistance that's all it provides the lubricity is uh, we don't have to worry about the lubricity this gun will work uh, absolutely dry without any without any concerns it's not going to wear out or anything like that because it's all steel on steel uh, workings here 
uh, the uh, the bolt works within uh, a steel barrel and that's all I have is just that amount of just that amount of oil now in fact I, I can say that a little bit too much so what I'm going to do is wipe it off I've said this in my how to uh, oil and how to how not to oil the oil has been applied to that bolt it's in the pores of the metal and that will protect it from that will protect it from any corrosion. Uh, you don't want to have you don't want to have anything more than that. Just this is a clean cloth. I applied the oil. Now I just simply wiped it off. I wiped off the excess, and uh, it's it. Whatever oil is on my fingers now is sufficient to keep that uh, nice and uh, protected. Do the same thing with your do the same thing with your pins. In fact, I've got enough oil on my fingers right now. I can just simply wipe the pins down with my fingers. That's all the oil that you need on a gun any gun uh, unless I unless I give you specific instructions otherwise there are certain certain parts that sometimes require um, maybe a, a daub of grease but that's a rarity now we'll go right ahead and clean up the inside of this receiver there's no reason whatsoever to remove uh, the locking bar the uh, bolt locking bar whatsoever you don't want to take that out uh, unless it's an extreme circumstance because it's a little bit uh, you have to know how to get that back in there there's a there's a way to uh, place that spring in that's a little bit complex and I'm not going to go into that today and don't remove this cover this cover is a very difficult cover to replace so that's it just clean it up very good uh, I don't need to do this on camera I'll get this up I'll get this up and cleaned in a hurry and we'll be right back with you and put it back together now we've cleaned it up nicely now once again I'm going to mention this interior surface right here must be absolutely dry. You don't want to have oil on there. This is this is anodized aluminum. It's 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 corrosion proof anyway. Uh, but you don't want to have any oil in there which will cause uh, floating of the uh, barrel against the receiver so that you can't tighten it up tightly. You want to have uh, two two dry contact uh, areas. Your firing pin is retained by this. Uh, pin right here this cross pin so be sure you don't snag your firing pin as you're reassembling now you want to make sure that you have that cutaway that mi that milled uh, flat area um, against this you want to have that against this uh, action bar and simply install that in the way carefully and you'll notice that right here is you can see the you can see the ejector uh, that should allow that that should allow that bolt to ride nicely right in there and <clears throat> I cleaned the barrel up uh, with a uh, after after passing those wet patches through uh, I ran a couple of dry patches through uh, then followed up by a lightly oiled patch which coated the inside of the bore and then follow that up with uh, one dry patch because the worst thing in the world you can have with a 22 is to have any uh, oil in your uh, chamber. That oil in the chamber will very quickly start causing uh, grabbing of uh, the, the brass and uh, getting dirty and you don't need that. Uh, that very very light uh, microscopic film of oil is all that's necessary to give full protection to this gun. Okay, um, now make sure that your action bar is located down here into this section of the milled uh, bolt you want to pass the you want to pass the bolt into the into the receiver like that with the action bar uh, sliding right in and then just carefully uh, slide the whole mechanism together that's it and once you've got that in place uh, return your Phillips screw into this area here you don't ever want to remove this bushing or disturb this bushing right here that that's staked in place uh, and it's factory fitted and if you remove that you're going to have uh, real problems and it would have to go back to the factory for refitting so uh, simply install that Phillips screw firmly now you don't want to you don't want to ever over tighten or over torque uh, use any wrenches or anything like that, but you just simply want to tighten that up nice and firmly until it comes to a dead stop. There's a, there's also uh, washers on each of these screws. Now the next the next screw you want to replace is the barrel dowel screw. And again, be sure you don't lose the little you don't want to lose the little uh, washer that goes on that. Now this 
This screw here in particular, um, this screw has a very important role in keeping the barrel stabilized in the receiver. If you don't tighten this up uh, fully and completely, uh, you'll never get your gun sighted in, especially if you have a uh, especially if you have a scope mounted on it because your scope is going to be looking at a different place than uh, your barrel. Your barrel is going to be uh, squirreling around all over the place. So we'll put that screw in nice and tightly. Okay, I've tightened that screw up uh, nice and firmly so it wouldn't uh, so it wouldn't loosen up. And it, it's got to turn it until uh, it comes to a uh, dead stop and doesn't turn any further. But don't overturn it. You don't want to snap that screw or you don't want to stra strip those threads. Uh, you do that and you have a real, real problem. Uh, the gun is worthless after that. So tighten it up uh, with, you know, with sensible tightness until it no longer uh, turns. But don't use any uh, force on it and don't use any... Uh, extra tools that will apply extra torque or anything like that. You just want to make sure that that screw is nice and firmly set in place. We'll go ahead and put the uh, trigger mechanism back in. Okay, the trigger mechanism is easily inserted into the receiver. Just just slide it into place uh, and then uh, depress it. There's a little bit of spring pressure there that you have to retain with your, with your hand and uh, just guide your... I like to put the small pin in first just get it started and then you can uh, and you can finish up the job afterwards that'll retain it and then put the other put the other pin in and uh, just give it a light just give it a light tap with a nylon don't now don't think that you can just whack this against this aluminum uh, without scarring the aluminum. Uh, these these hammers will mar things, so they're not mar proof. Uh, and just make sure it's flush. Um, that's all you need to do. And you've got your uh, Model 572 Fieldmaster back together. If you've shot 22s with tubular magazines, I'm sure you've had the experience, the frustrating experience, of this tube wanting to slide down inside while you're trying to load the gun. And uh, I'm going to show you how that uh, is easily corrected. First of all, just Wipe down the wipe down the tube, clean it off with an, any uh, good solvent, non-oiling solvent. That's important. Just uh, you want to wipe it down, dry it off, and this is the trick. Simply take a little bit of Vaseline petroleum jelly, which is very waterproof. Uh, now that's a very imperceptible amount. You don't need anything at all. Uh, just barely enough to. Uh, apply with your fingers along the length of it and that will give it a little bit of stickiness so that that magazine tube doesn't want to keep sliding down as you're trying to load the gun and it'll also provide excellent uh, waterproofness to keep rainwater from uh, migrating between the two tubes into your receiver that's it happy and safe shooting to you and god bless